Okay, welcome back physics 30s to our next lesson in chapter 3. This is 3.3 and today we're going to be talking about current carrying wires. Okay, so in the last lessons we talked about the three hand rules that you can use for understanding electromagnetism. And we used the third hand rule to analyze the force that a charged particle is going to feel when moving through a magnetic field. And it led us to the conclusion that if a charge is moving perpendicular to a magnetic field, it will undergo a circular motion. And today we're going to look at current going through a wire that is in a magnetic field. Now a current carrying wire is just a lot of flowing electrons. And all of these flowing charged particles will experience a force like we saw with the third hand rule. So today we'll look at a force being applied to a wire. So we can see in the diagram we have a wire in between two magnets. And the magnetic field will go from north to south. And we're going to run a current through this wire. Now, since we're looking at the flow of electrons, I'm going to use my left hand, which represents negative charge, and I'm going to point my thumb in the direction that the electrons are going and the fingers in the direction of the field lines. And then using the third hand rule, these electrons that are flowing in that direction should feel a force in the downwards direction, which is the direction of my palm. So now that whole wire with the current flowing through it is going to feel a force down. So we're going to calculate the force on that wire with kind of a new equation, but it's pretty similar to the one we saw with charged particles. So I'll show you how we get the formula. Before we had Fm, the force from the magnetic field, was equal to Q times velocity times the magnetic field strength or magnetic induction. Now we're just going to look at velocity, and now we're having the velocity of those charges going through the wire. You may recall from other physics lessons that velocity is equal to distance over time. Now, instead of looking at distance, it's going through a wire. So we're going to call that distance the length of a wire. So I'm just going to represent that with L over T. Now I'm going to take this formula and plug it back in to our original. So let's write Fm is equal to QL over T. All right, that's replacing velocity again, times by B or the magnetic field strength. Now, all I'm gonna do here is move that divided by T over to underneath Q. Won't make a difference to our calculations. So I'm just gonna have Fm is equal to Q over T times L times B. I think, well, why did I do that? Well, Q over T is coulombs per second. This is a measure of how much charge is flowing through the wire at what rate. This is current, which is measured in amps, which is coulombs per second. So now I'm going to replace that with a capital I. Again, C, I think, was used for speed of light. So we have I for current times the length of the wire times by the magnetic field strength. And that's going to be the equation we use for calculating the force on a current carrying wire. Now, before we leave this, let's take a look at units because we didn't really look at the field strength before. Uh, so the field strength was Tesla. But I was like, well, what is a Tesla? A Tesla is a Newton per amp meter. Okay, let's look at the units to make sure that this all makes sense. My current is going to be in amps. The length of this wire is going to be in meters. And the magnetic field strength will be in Tesla, which is Newtons per amp meter. Now we can see here that this cancels nicely. Amps cancel, meters cancel, and we get left with Newtons which makes sense as that's going to be the unit for our force. Okay, so let's take a look at this example that says a 45 centimeter, 10 gram current carrying wire is placed between two magnets. The magnets have a field strength of 0.085 Tesla and the wire is suspended between the two magnets. Okay, similar to the suspending of charged particles we saw before. What amount of current would have to run through the wire so that it is suspended? Okay, so if it's being suspended, this means that there's gravity pulling down and the magnetic field pushing it up or the magnetic force pushing it up. So I've just drawn these two magnets here and we'll draw the field lines from north to south. Again, you could be viewing this from any angle, but I'm gonna choose that north is where I'm standing and it's going towards south. And we need this to be pushing up. So then the electrons must be going to the left. I'm gonna put an arrow here to the left. Hopefully you can see that in orange. Maybe I'll put it here. Electrons going to the left there. I point my thumb in that direction, field lines into the page, and I should get a force up. So the reason why I put orange here is I'm gonna kind of imagine this as a free body diagram. If this is the mass of the wire, we have a force going up that is going to be the magnetic force, and then a force going down, which is going to be the force of gravity. 
And if it is suspended there, that means these two forces are balanced. So then I would begin this equation with Fm is equal to Fg. Now the equation that I just talked about before is ILB is equal to now the force of gravity. I'm just going to put mg there because we're assuming this is on the surface of the earth. Gravity will be 9.81. Trying to figure out how much current we need to go through. It's asking about current here. So I'm just going to re rearrange by dividing by the length of the wire and the magnetic field strength on both sides, L and B. I should be able to just plug in here. So I is equal to our mass of 0 0.01 kilograms. Don't forget to convert that times by the gravity 9.81 meters per second squared. Then divide by the length. It said it was 45 centimeters. Make sure to put that in meters, so 0 0.45, and then the field strength of 0 0.085 Tesla, which we saw was newtons per amp meter. And when I plug all that in, I'm getting 2.56, which would round to 2.6 amps of current flowing through this wire, rounded to two significant digits as we had that in the question. Okay, so just to conclude this video, let's look at a new scenario to see how the third hand rule can apply to current carrying wires for a theory question. So let's say we have these two wires and in the blue wires, we have electrons flowing to the right. And then if I take another scenario with these red wires, the one has electrons flowing to the left and the other one electrons flowing to the right. And the question could be which wires will attract each other and which ones will repel. I want you to take a moment to think about this and then check back in to see the answer. Okay, let's see how you did. Let's start with the blue ones. I'm gonna look at that top blue wire and I'm gonna see what magnetic field is gonna be created by that electron. If we're looking at current flowing through a wire, we're gonna use our first hand rule. So from your perspective, point your thumb in the direction of the electron movement and you're gonna get your hands curling in this direction. That's gonna be the magnetic field. And so I'm gonna show the lines like this, again, curving over top and coming underneath the bottom there. Now let's look at that field where the second wire is. It's going to be coming out of the page by that bottom wire. So I'm gonna draw that like this, again, showing those arrows coming out of the page. So from your perspective, you'd put your left hand with fingers pointing out of the page and the electrons going to the left like this, so there should be a force going up or towards the other wire. So that would be an attractive force between those wires. Let's look at the other ones to see if they repel. So I'm gonna look at that top wire first and again, draw the field lines with the first left-hand rule. So I'd take my hand from your perspective, point left with the electrons and curve around in this direction. So it's going the opposite way. Hopefully you can see with this diagram of them curving the opposite direction. So now at the bottom of that wire, we're gonna have the field lines going into the page. So I put X's and now we'll apply the third hand rule. We'll put our fingers into the page, the electron going to the right, and we should have a force downwards, which I'll show with an arrow here. And it's gonna be going away from that wire. So when they're going in opposite directions, they're gonna repel. When they're going in the same direction, they're going to attract. Now I chose the top wire, but you could do the same for the bottom and you'll still get the same result. Okay, so that's it for today's video. I hope that helped you to understand forces on a current carrying wire in a magnetic field. Thank you for watching this video, and I will see you in the next one.